Hi, I'm Andy Chick, Director of Marketing for Independent Electric Supply. And today we're joined by Jordan Johnson of Legrand, and more importantly, the Watt Stopper product. And um, Jordan, it seems like every project we see now has some form of lighting control on. What, what is driving this? So the major driver, Andy, is really that uh, we're seeing that energy code nationwide is starting to require things like dimming in most spaces, definitely sensors or something to turn off lights in spaces, and then also cool things like daylighting control to take advantage of natural light, right? So okay. the lights automatically dim in a space, for instance, when it's the afternoon. Saving energy, which helps everybody. Absolutely. So absolutely. Recently here at IES, we upgraded some of our offices to the Watt Stopper product in order to uh, take advantage of some of these energy savings and lighting controls. And so, Jordan, can you walk me through what we installed? Yeah, absolutely. So the ideal place to start, Andy, is really with the LMRC. Um, lighting Management Room Controller okay. 111. So this is a single circuit in, and then it wires out to our, to our lighting load. Um, so this would do one switch leg of control for you. Um, what's really innovative and very cool about this product is that it gives the contractor the ability to do a class one or a class two termination in terms of how they run their zero to 10 volt uh, okay. wiring. So again, a lot of contractors are starting to use a luminary cable for their zero to 10 volt applications. Right. So this allows you to use the lumen cable very effectively. The luminary cable is a cable that will carry both your line voltage conductors and your zero to 10 so that the contractor can do one run to the fixture rather than running it separate being line voltage circuitry class one and then zero to 10. Okay, so labor savings as well. Labor savings, absolutely. Okay, so labor and energy savings. So this controls what? So this would control your, your lighting load in the space, right? So you would okay. bring your lighting circuit to this device and then wire out to the fixture. And then, then when the relay inside of this box is open, that light will be off. Okay, great. So um, so that's going to, again, turn on and off the, the lighting in the space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a relay in here, right? When that relay is open, the lighting load is off. Okay. <clears throat> so this will be mounted on our, our junction box above the ceiling, most typically. Okay. We'll cat five out, out of this device to our sensor. Okay. Um, next, for instance. Okay. Uh, this is an LMDC 100, so a dual technology ceiling sensor. So okay. what you have going on here, Andy, is you have uh, the transmitter and receiver, which is essentially um, represents the ultrasonic function of the sensor, and okay. then you have the PIR lens. So ultrasonic is great for minor movement, okay, and it really fills up the space. It's a volumetric um, sound wave, okay? So what happens is that sound wave leaves the sensor and it bounces off the floor and the wall and returns to the sensor at a constant rate. Okay. As you or I move throughout the space, that sound wave hits us. It takes longer to return to the sensor, signifying, hey, someone's there. Right. Again, so a cubicle office environment or maybe a stalled restroom, great for ultrasonic. Okay, so no nuisance of lights going off during the day, but through That's this. the idea. Okay. And then you have the PIR. So PIR is a line of sight technology. Okay. Okay, and basically what it's looking for is looking for your body heat and the transfer from one segment zone to the next. So it sees your body heat in relationship to the background space, and as you or I move from one zone to the next, it signals someone's there. So why the dual technology? So dual technology really gives you the best of both worlds. Okay. In the event that you are having false triggers, maybe false ons or false offs, um, you can rely maybe more on the PIR if it makes sense or more on the ultrasonic. So it's really nice to, in one SKU, you get both technologies and again, covers worst case scenario. Coming next here is the LMDM. Okay. Okay. So this is our low voltage switch, uh, just cat five in, right? So cat five into there, brings power to the device mm -hmm. and pretty simplistic operation on the LMDM. Okay, so a single press of the top of the switch will turn your lighting load off. A single press of the bottom will turn the load off. Okay. And then if you press and hold the bottom, you'll see a nice dimming function. And then when you press and hold the top, it will raise the lighting level for you. Okay. And then you also have some nice status LEDs that will um, correspond to the lighting level in that space. Half the light bulbs. Half the <laughs> LEDs on. Nice. Uh, next is our uh, photo cell. This is our okay. LMLS 400, okay? This is a closed loop photo cell. So basically what this device does is it takes a reading of both natural light and electronic light contribution, and then it will dim the fixtures accordingly. Um, for instance, so as it gets, uh, we move it to the afternoon, right? The, the light level in that space will rise because the sun is moving higher in the sky. Right. This will automatically dim your fixtures. In a number of spaces now you have daylighting control requirements driven by code. Okay, okay. And this is easy to install as well? Absolutely, just a Cat5 cable in there and you're ready to rock and roll. And the Cat5 cable goes to? The LMRC, it could, or it could go to the sensor or the switch. Okay, so they're daisy chain, yep. essentially. DLM okay. is great in that it's a free topology network in terms of Cat5. So that means that you can leave the room controller and go to the sensor and over to the photo cell, or you could do two home runs back to the room controller, whatever way you want to do it. Simplify the install, make it easy on the contractor. Okay. okay. And lastly, what do we have here? What's what's this? Yeah. So this is uh, the LMCT. Um, so this device allows you to make programming changes in the space. Okay. Um, so for instance, if we talk about the, the sensor. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in years past, if you look at an occupancy sensor, 
when you want to make adjustments to it, be it maybe a time delay change or sensitivity, you have to go to the device, right? So you got to go up the ladder, remove the faceplate off there, and then make adjustments. So now you can stand on the floor with the LMCT and just make the changes right there. Again, easy. Make, uh, make changes pretty much on the fly. Yeah, give it a whirl. So we have sensor controls, we have load configure. What does that mean? Yeah, so load configure is about assigning uh, respective devices to the load. So okay. for instance, when I, act in, when I enact a load configuration mode, I can then pair devices, maybe a switch for instance, mm -hmm. um, or a sensor to a respective load or loads in that space. Right. So, for instance, if you had multiple switches, you may want switch one to control switch leg A, switch two to control switch leg B. Load configuration gives you the ability to make those load assignments. Okay. Basically, don't have dissimilar loads in one. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Daylighting configuration. Yep. Daylighting configuration is so you can make uh, adjustments to the photo cell. So you may want to set a different level in there, right? So that one. So this can talk to this. Absolutely. Oh, how cool. Now, who owns this? Is this is this initially for the contractor to install? This is for a building manager. This is for you office know, personnel. The I beauty mean, on this device, Andy, is yes. it really could go either way. Okay. Um, so the contractor will have one on the initial install, so that it can make programming changes. Right. But also, a really cool leave behind for your facility engineer, for instance, right? So they can make changes as they go forward in their building, right? So they may want to adjust the sensor time delay so that lights go off sooner in a space, for instance. They okay. can do that. So tell me, what, what's new at Wattstop? Yeah, so the newest addition to the Wattstopper uh, product family is the LMBC 600. Okay, so this is a wireless network bridge. Okay. So on jobs currently, um, when we have a network project, what we do is there's a physical cable that runs between our existing bridge module. So again, if you're networking a number of offices, there's a physical connection of a wire running between those offices. This device removes that cable. So okay. now that you just have one Cat5 into this from any DLM component in the room, and then this will wirelessly communicate through our border router to our segment manager. Um, so for jobs where you have maybe a demand response requirement, so if you want, so the utility is gonna essentially tell you to um, reduce some of your lighting level, that you would install this product. Uh, it can, that will take that, uh, that communication from the front end and then distribute a command into the space, maybe to dim the loads or turn them off or schedule. So some of the typical installations may be? Anytime you have a network job, you'll start to see this device. If it's just standalone room, um, room, room level control, you won't see this device, but anytime you have a network project, so think um, an entire campus, um, multiple floors on a, on a building, for instance, oh. you would have this product here. And really the benefit comes in that it streamlines the design for the engineer, right. um, reduces the install time, right, because right. now no connection that the, the contract has to run in terms of uh, wire, and also just reduces uh, some of the, the delays that may be caused in startup from mis, uh, miswiring. Okay. So it just kind of removes a lot of the, those headaches from, uh, from the picture, um, making it easier on everybody involved, uh, from the end user to the uh, installing contractor. So the newest thing that you'll see uh, uh, to the Wattstopper DLM product family is our wireless lighting controls. Okay. Um, so I brought a couple devices to, for us to check out today. Great. Uh, the first is the border router. Okay. So check that out. Um, and basically, Andy, what's going on is that this device here will allow you to communicate wirelessly to this bridge. Okay. Okay. So, for instance, if you're on a larger campus or multi-story facility, um, you'll want to take advantage of the network uh, lighting control setup. Um, and again, how we do this today, typically, is there would be a physical connection ran between the rooms to network. Okay. So now, with this device, we can remove that physical connection. So you're not wiring from room, room to, to room, room to room. room. It's completely exactly. wireless. Absolutely. So this is really the um, kind of the gateway into the room, if you will. Okay. okay. So streamlines the design for the engineer, right? right. Um, no more physical connection ran throughout that facility or on the plans. And then install is simplified as well, right? Because now the contractor has one less wired to install. And then it also alleviates some of the, the, the headaches that we see on projects because of wiring and termination issues. Uh, and really in, uh, speeds up the startup okay. for, for us and the contractor, making sure that they're, they're getting that final right on time. So you're reducing labor rates, you're reducing material costs, Absolutely. and you're able to communicate from one central point to all your rooms. Typical installation would be where? Typical installation, again, would be a, a larger facility, almost okay. typically, right? So again, if you're uh, maybe a campus um, or a multi-story um, office space. Or an electrical wholesaler. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Here at LeGround, we think we're uniquely positioned to take advantage of the Internet of Things, right? We think about all the things LeGround offers, right? Whether it be pass and see more, wire mode, or lot of stuff, right? How those things are really start to tie together. Okay. Um, so, to really tell the story, um, 
Let's look at how we do a DLM install today. Um, you will see a physical Cat5 connection between devices. Okay. okay. So to a sensor, um, like you have in your hand, or to a photo cell or a switch. So with the introduction of the wireless product, we can now remove that green Cat5 connection, and you simply install your sensor, and then you will pair it to the room controller. Fully wireless. Fully wireless. 10-year battery life. Um, PIR sensor, obviously, okay. okay, characterized by this lens here. And then you also get the ability to mask the lens. Okay. So the masking comes into play when you may be getting false triggers, right? So if you have that in your office and somebody walks through the hall, if that coverage pattern's leaking out that door a little right. bit, um, you may get a false on. Right. Okay. So when you add the masking, it gives you ability to kind of uh, direct the, the coverage pattern to where, where you need it most. Okay. Standard ceiling mount. And then the one in your hand here is a corner. Uh, some applications, it may make more sense to direct the sensor from the corner rather than the ceiling. We got you covered either way you want to go. Okay, so another great product from Watch Stopper. Be sure to visit your local independent electric supply today for all your Watch Stopper wireless needs. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Eddie.